Fear not, Scranton. This is Pastor Elliot Cook from Jackson Street Baptist Church. Thank you for watching this video. I'm here to remind you that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him would not perish but have everlasting life. I pray that you have found that truth in your own way uh, and have surrendered your heart and your life to Christ. I'll give you that opportunity at the end of this message. I am ending this uh, week with a last message on prayer. Last week, we took a look at the importance of the scriptures, the Bible. This week, our focus has been on prayer, the importance of prayer in the Christian life. It's one of the five spiritual disciplines, reading of God's word and prayer, uh, number two. Uh, this coming week, we'll be focusing on our third. Tune in on Monday and find out what it is. We'll have these messages every week until the pandemic is over and maybe beyond. Who knows? But uh, it's important to get the word out. And I appreciate all the comments and likes, the shares. Uh, they're important to help get the word out, to make sure that uh, these messages are appearing on people's timelines so that they too can hear the good news and perhaps uh, have their heart strangely warmed, as many have um, already. And uh, today I'd like to take you to a passage of scripture. It's in James chapter 4, starting in verse 2, the second half of verse 2, actually, in James chapter 4, says, You do not have because you do not ask God. <laughs> Pretty simple, huh? I mean, that kind of describes uh, the purpose of prayer, does it not? You can go and ask your governor. You can go and ask your mother, your father. You can go and ask your principal, your boss. You can go and ask people to accomplish things for you. And it may be listened to, and maybe somebody would do something on your behalf to help you to change the situation. There's nothing wrong with asking somebody else. But ultimately, there are certain things that only God can do, only God can deliver, only God can, can heal, uh, meet that need that is too difficult for anybody else. Even the doctor, when he's at his wit's end, you can still turn to someone. Did you know that? You can turn to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> you don't have because you don't ask God. He's the one you should be asking uh, these things for. The impossible Go straight to God. You know, it's important. It's important. You don't have because you don't ask. And then verse 3, we're told, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. Wrong motives in prayer uh, can hinder your prayers. The prayers of a righteous person availeth much. They're powerful and effective because they're pleasing to God. God's word is dwelling in the hearts and lives of the righteous. They're trying to live a good life. They're trying to live God's way. And when they mess up, they confess it to God and to the people around them. And they make amends. But there are some people who think prayer is, is like uh, approaching Santa Claus. God is not the great Santa Claus in heaven whose sole purpose is to give you everything that you want. No. You see, it's God's will be done, not our own, on earth just as it is in heaven. This is what we pray for. We pray for his will to be done. And so, hopefully... We're living our lives so close to God's word that when we ask for something, it is in line with God's will and not selfish, something just for ourselves. You know, you can pray for a Mercedes or a jet or a helicopter or an ocean liner or whatever you want to have, but that shows and betrays certain immaturity, especially if you're calling yourself a Christian. You can pray for a mansion, but God wants you to have a roof over your head. And instead of squandering the resources, you could share with your fellow man, some of whom do not have roofs over their heads. 
instead of a Mercedes or luxury vehicle, you can have a Chevy. And you can give to those who don't have transportation. You can help the homeless. You can get involved and spend your money in other ways. When you're asking for things that are outside of God's will for your life, outside of his will for, for mankind, when it's selfish and only to, to feed yourself or to pleasure yourself, these are wrong motives, the verse says. We ought to care about others as more important than ourselves. And we pray for them. That's why when you pray, you spend time uh, talking and adoring God. I call it the acts of prayer. Adoration. Okay. Um, you want to praise him in the first part of your prayer. Second in the acts of prayer is confession. You're going to spell acts. Adoration, confession. You confess that you are a sinner. Any sin that you've committed since the last time you prayed, you confess it. Uh, to the Lord and you ask for forgiveness. Uh, then you come to T, thanksgiving. We're spelling out acts, right? Adoration, confession, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, where you praise him and thank him for your daily bread, that you got up, that your family's healthy, that you have clothes, that you still have a job, whatever. You thank him for what there is to be thankful for. And last comes the S, the acts of prayer, supplications. That's the requests that we make. And those requests ought to be mostly for other people, not for ourselves. God knows what you need. He's going to provide for you what you need. Just like he provides for the sparrows, you know. He's going to provide for your daily sustenance. In fact, he might do more for you because you're so other people focused. Boy, this person doesn't even care. That, you know, they're not well cared for. And I can see that if they continue this way, their health will be in jeopardy. So I'm going to bless them. I'm going to steer some blessings their way. <laughs> because knowing them, they're just going to share it with the people around them anyway. You can trust such a person who's other people minded with tremendous blessings. You know, if you're faithful with a little, he'll give you more because he knows that you'll be faithful in much. But if you're unfaithful with the little blessings that he sends your way, he's not going to be so trusting to give you a greater blessing. There are some preachers who will preach to you that if you want a great blessing, you've got to give. Give to my ministry. When you hear these words, run. Do not listen to them. They're charlatans. They are only looking out for their own interests. Similarly, in prayer, we ought to be other people focused. Ministry is not about a ministry. It's not about a minister. It's not about a church. It's not about a ministry. It's not about a group of people and sustaining them. It's about God honoring him with our lives, living rightly, encouraging one another, sharing the good news of the gospel, helping the poor. This is real religion. If you're finding yourself in a church that's asking for money and talking about money, there's some people I turn on the TV and that's all, every message, it's all about give, give till it hurts. You know, that it's part of your faith, the health and wealth gospel. Turn the station. Keep looking for another church. Yeah, it might sound vibrant. And yes, they might have flashy things because they can afford it. Because they've hoodwinked a lot of people to give to support a ministry. And they're flying around the countries in jets. And they live in mansions. There's one mansion I want to live in. It's in glory. My father will build it for me. I don't want it here in this life. I'm storing up for myself treasure in heaven. And I pray you are too, that you can identify the difference between a righteous person and somebody who's pretending. I pray that you will understand a 
a true prayer and a prayer that's selfish. Perhaps your need is to trust in Jesus this day. And you're starting to understand that there's a difference. There's something genuine in faith in Christ, and there are many who are just pretending. Perhaps you've been pretending your whole life, and you're ready to get real. You're ready to make it genuine by confessing your sins to God. I encourage you to pray this prayer as I do in, at the end of all my messages. It goes something like this. Father God, I surrender. I have been pretending, and it's doing me no good. It's doing my family no good. It has accomplished nothing. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus died for me. I'm trusting in that only, not in my good works. I've been so selfish. My prayers betray me, for I pray only for myself and for my family. Change my heart. Help me to pray prayers that are pleasing to you, to think of others first. Father, help me to be more committed to prayer. Transform my life. I don't want to live for myself. I want to live for you. So take over, take control. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope and pray that you are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ and that prayer has become more important to you this week because of our times together. And I pray that you now understand how to pray, simply talking to God, uh, praising him, thanking him, uh, confessing to him, and then praying for others. And yes, it's okay to pray for yourself, certain needs that you have. He's not going to ignore you or no. Prayers for yourself are okay. They really truly are. But it shouldn't be the only thing that you pray for or the first thing that you pray for. Your priorities are, are shown in how you pray. All I have to do is sit with a person in prayer to pray corporately together for 10 minutes, and I know their heart. Same thing's true with God. He sits with us. He knows our hearts from how we pray, what we're talking about when we're talking to him. If we have his best interest in, in our hearts and minds or our own, we can't hide anything from God. You cannot pretend. Even people around you aren't fooled. Most people around you aren't fooled. Well, Scranton, fear not. The Lord loves you. May the Lord bless you this day. This is Pastor Elliot Cook from Jackson Street Baptist Church signing off. God bless.